the Organisation of the League of Nations, the Assembly. Each of the member states on this map here were represented in the Assembly. It met once every year and discussed broad topics, things that were quite general, such as what do you do with any new treaties, any new members that come in, this sort of thing, quite general things. One of the issues the Assembly had is all of its decisions had to be unanimous. Now, unanimous simply means everybody agreeing. Well, when you've got that many countries involved, you know, unanimous decisions is going to be quite tough, isn't it? So it seems likely that the Assembly would never really come to any useful conclusions. Next, we'll look at the Council. In the Treaty of Versailles section, where the League of Nations was discussed, the Council was going to be made up of five permanent members. These were uh, America, the United Kingdom, France, Italy, and Japan. But of course, as America were not involved in the League of Nations anymore, we can take those out. So there were four left. The French, the British, the Japanese, and the Italians as permanent members. Now this is important because they get all the rights but that the League of Nations get but for all of the time. These were joined by four non-permanent members from other countries that were elected onto the board for a three-year period. The main duty of the Council was to solve any dispute that might occur between the states by negotiation. If any country was considered to have started a war by an act of aggression, then that war became the concern of all the countries in the League who would take action together. Okay, But these four permanents with whoever happened to be the non-permanents at the time would coordinate that. And the League could do various things. The first thing they can do is moral condemnation. In other words, all the countries of the League, the four permanents and the rest, would put pressure on the country that was in the wrong and hopefully get them to change their ways, think about what they're doing. They could impose economic sanctions. And those simply mean stop trading with that country in all of the goods they, they sell, in some of the goods they sell. If there's something they sell a lot of, then stop buying that to damage the economy, to sort of get the country to struggle, and therefore the country have to come and change its ways because it's in bother. And the final one was military force. If moral condemnation and sanctions hadn't worked, all of the League of Nations uh, members could come together with an armed force and act against the aggressor. So the Council, if you like, was the machinery to enforce collective security and to enforce that there would be future peace. And the four around the Council name at the top of the page there were the ones that were central to this. Finally, the Permanent Court of Justice. This was an international court that still exists today in one form, and it had 15 judges. It was held, as still is, in The Hague in Holland, in the Netherlands, and it dealt with any disputes between countries over international law, such as which treaty they were involved in. The problem it has is it got no way of enforcing its decisions. If it says to a country, you're in the wrong, it needs that country to accept that decision and abide by it. They actually can't force them to. Um, the idea of it is to sort of have one court that every country around the world recognises. Unfortunately, it's got rid of in 1946 and this new one set up because it had no teeth and no real legitimacy. So the League had some weaknesses. The USA not going into it, as we mentioned. Germany and Russia not allowed, meant it was weak from the start. Britain and France were not really prepared to play a leading role in it. The Secretariat looked after the day-to-day -day business, the, you know, the admin, etc., but the actual way it was run with the council and the assembly was really weak. And one of the key issues, this little word, veto. A veto means a vote or a, an opinion that blocks the decision. So in other words, if anybody from France, Britain, Japan and Italy disagreed with something the League was working on or disagreed with what the League was about to say, they could veto, i.e. block, any idea that came their way. On top of that, the League's got no army. So it can stamp its foot and shake its fist and threaten people all it likes, 
But countries know, what are you going to threaten me with? The only army they could ever get together is little bits from every country, and that depends on that country being prepared to lend you their mm. army. So the League was up against it, and when it came to prove itself, it really struggled.